Okay, now I'm going to show you how to import your own content and images into the template file. To begin with, I'm going to show you how we've structured the template file so that you, um, you know where to go and update this content. I'm going to go into our timeline, and as you're in the timeline, you'll notice some different groupings in here. We have content intro group, we have content one, whoops, we have content one, content two, content three, all these different groupings in here. So if you want to update the introduction text here, I'm going to go ahead and just open up that group so you can see what's in there. We have content intro header and content intro text. And if I just hide and show those, you can see on the stage which what those are. Very simple to update. You can just double click into it and you know whatever your updated content would be for that. If you're working from a storyboard, you could just, I mean, get rid of this, copy and paste your, your new stuff into it. Very simple to do that. You'd want to do that for each one of um, the tabs that you'll be using. So you just simply hide the intro, show the content one, double click into it, copy and paste your new text or type it, and just do the same thing and just work your way all the way down. If you'd like to add an image, let's say an image to content one, what we'll do is go into, um, you can either go to your library and if you already have an image in here, you could drag it in to your stage. But I'm going to actually go and import a new image and click open. And now I have that new image in here. And I'm just going to scale her down, make it a little bit smaller, and give you this little side tip here on positioning. Since this is positioned on the right and the bottom, kind of closer to the right and the bottom of the screen, I'm actually going to anchor it down there and I'm just going to do that just right here. I'm going to do a 12% and then 9% and that should work really well for this template. And the reason I do that just as a side note is that when you scale it down to the different sizes, you see how she scales and she's anchored in that corner. That keeps it really nice and clean and as it even goes down into mobile, and really on the mobile view, I might even just remove her off to the side because it might not be you know, that important on the mobile view to have that image. Um, anyway, so now I need to actually show you how to include that into tab one so that when the um, user clicks tab one, that image shows along with the content. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna first click on her and in the properties, just like anything in Captivate, if you don't want it to show from the get-go, you need to make sure you make the visibility not visible, right? And so you'll, if I click on the content, you'll see that it's already set to that also. So you just need to make sure your image is set like that too. Otherwise, Captivate will just naturally show the image to, um, when it publishes. Okay, so now it will not show, but we need to associate it with the group so it will show when we click it. And the way we do that now is just, I'm gonna hold down Shift so I can select both of these items. So I selected the group one and the image. And now I'm going to right click on it and hit group. And what that's going to do is it's going to place that image right inside my content one group. So if I open that up in the timeline, you'll see image and then both my content, the header and the text in here. And now it's all grouped together. And just as like an organization thing, you'll notice that Captivate automatically puts it at the top of the timeline when I do that grouping. I like to grab it and just put it back in order just to keep it clean and tidy.